Good evening, everyone. Time for another silver update. This is the one minute chart of silver provided by netdania.com. You can click on the link below. So you can see we're testing that area around 16, below 15, um, testing around in the 15 price range. Uh, the last time that I bought anything was back in here. Um, just kind of looked like it had sold off enough. Maybe it was going to rally, but maybe that the selling was through. So we went ahead and pulled the trigger there. I think that was the half ounce koalas. But uh, so are we going lower? Well, maybe um, if we look at the gold, you can see that gold is kind of going sideways. So that would tend to indicate that perhaps the selling is over for now. But you can see a very bearish trend there just kind of falling off. Very large volumes. Now we know that these volumes all started to come in with the shenanigans with the Fed, with the Bank of Japan. What's going on there? We're going to talk about that in a bit. But let's get back to silver and go back to the long view because I wanted to take you to that 15 level that we're looking at that was the level that I called a long time ago and was going to be the test area you can see this this is the area right there at about 15 that was the target that we were looking for if we were going to get a severe smackdown could we go through that price yes anything can happen do I think we'll go through that price we may dip through it and bounce back up I think probably on a violent rally. It's it's getting to the point of absurdity. You can see back here in 2008 when the Bear Stearns crisis happened, silver actually topped out at 21 something and then we had this dramatic drop down into the financial crisis. We know that silver bottomed around 8 something. But this decline here is actually much more significant. It's gone on for a longer time and it's I think it's now even a, a larger percentage move, correct me if I'm wrong, it's close. So why isn't this portending a financial catastrophe? Well it might. We know they saved the stock market with hints at QE4 but then that didn't come through. So it's the, the markets are crazy right now. But I just wanted to point out to you the volume on this. The volume is up into the insane levels. We'll get to the daily here to look at. So you can see that number that we get there on the daily for Friday. You can see that's number two behind the Boston bombing. That's it. So that's big. That's big volume. And just to give you an idea how big that volume is, we're going to assume that's correct at 10 million contracts. You multiply that times 5,000. And that gives you something like 50 billion ounces of silver. So we know that the U.S., the, the number for the U.S. is 50 million. That's what's mined. That's what's taken in Silver Eagles. I think we're going to take about that many again. Uh, I think October set a record. And so that gives you the kind of ratio that we're talking about here. We're talking 1,000 to 1. We're talking 1,000 paper ounces traded in the U.S. and the world for every one ounce that's mined every year in the U.S. So it's 99 point nine percent paper that's what's going on now why is this going on right now well it's because of what's going on in the currencies and with qe so we can see here if we pull up the euro we've got you know, that sell-off that's continuing here in the euro if we pull up the japanese yen we know what the the bank of japan has done they just absolutely committed harikari and uh, but but then again, this is supposed to be good, and that's something I want to address here real quick. So, first of all, we want to let's pull off the volume here and do a cross. I want to do a cross actually of the Japanese yen and crude oil, and the reason why is because the big cost for the Japanese there's there's always a cost people think that well we can devalue our currency and then our exports are cheaper and we just we're gonna have a booming economy well that's not how it works because you have a balance of trade I pointed this out before 
And since you have a balance of trade, that means that you have to pay for the things that you import. You get money for the things that you export. So, you know, normally it's a wash. Uh, but the, the big thing that Japan has to import is going to be energy. So if the value of their currency goes down, that means the cost of oil goes up for them. But you can see we did this cross. This isn't the usual cross. Um, this is the Japanese yen, US dollar, rather the US dollar, Japanese yen. So you can see, though, with the action there that of late, with this move down in the value of the Japanese yen, we've also had a corresponding move down, not as dramatic, but a move down in the price of oil. So that's somewhat neutral for the Japanese in that although their currency is worth less, the price of oil is going down. Now, if the price of oil reverses and goes way up, they're going to be in a world of hurt. I think they're actually in a world of hurt already. But what's so interesting about this, now let's go over and look at more crosses here. Let's take a look here at the Russian ruble. Because we know that Russia is has been or is in the process of being isolated uh, from the Western trading system. And we're going to talk about that system when we talk about the Trilateral Commission and the IMF. But uh, we can see here in the Russian ruble, let's get a longer view. You can see that on the daily that the Russian ruble really has lost a significant amount of value since um, August, let's say, because we're talking about from 33 to 33.5 here to about 43.5. So that's uh, almost a third devaluation in the value of the ruble. We see the same thing if we go over and look at the Ukrainian currency. So the question is, is if this is a sign that Russia's in trouble, which I think pretty much everybody agrees in the mainstream media that this is a sign that Russia's in trouble. If this is a sign that Russia's in trouble, then why isn't this a sign that Japan is in trouble? And why isn't this a sign that Europe is in trouble? See, you can't have it both ways. Either a weak currency indicates uh, a chance for the economy to strengthen, or a weak currency means that your currency is in trouble. Now, I tend to agree with the latter. A weak currency means that your currency is in trouble. The reason why the Japanese currency is weakening is, in my opinion, that the Federal Reserve came in and convinced the Bank of Japan to print up those trillions and trillions of yen to move the quantitative easing over to Japan. And they've done rounds in Europe, and it goes around Europe, Britain, United States, Japan. And that strengthened the dollar. There's a number of things that happen when the dollar gets strengthened. One thing is our imports become cheaper for us. Now we don't, as Jim Willie points out. I don't know if you, if you hear me talking in the background. Um, that's Jennifer listening to Jim Willie rant and rave. But if you listen to Jim Willie rant and rave lately, about, about the only exports we have is uh, garbage, worthlessness, toxic debt, and other things. And so if you think about it, a strengthened dollar doesn't really do much for us except make oil a little bit cheaper. Um, because the fact of the matter is that we don't really export anything. So it doesn't really matter what, what the value of the dollar is in, in, the, in that sense as, as far as balance of trade. We don't really have anything to export. We practically import everything. So that might bring our trade balance down a little bit than from the negative, but we've been running trade deficits as long as anyone can remember. And, we're, and that won't change that. We will continue to run trade deficits no matter how strong the dollar gets, because it uh, it's just going to, the like they traditionally say, there'll be less exports, although imports will be cheaper. So you actually have to make something and export it to, to bring your balance of trade back into balance. So I wanted to look at the IMF, and we'll start off by looking at the Trilateral Commission. Now, the Trilateral Commission is a favorite. You can see on the uh, Wiki, even the Wikipedia here. Here's kind of interesting little symbol there for it. 
Uh, David Rockefeller. So there's one of your favorites. Trilateral Commission is a non-governmental, non-partisan discussion group founded by David Rockefeller in July 1973 to foster closer cooperation among North America, Western Europe, and Japan. So there's your cast of characters. Now, we know that it's basically Japan, Western Europe, Britain, and America. And the conspiracy that I was talking about, there's been criticisms from the right. We know that Barry Goldwater um, attacked them being a, a larger than nation state conspiracy. Uh, trying to create a worldwide economic power superior to governments of the nation states involved. I agree with that. Um, there's a lot of organizations like that. And from the left, of course, Noam Chomsky. So, And then you've got Bilderberger's Council on Foreign Relations. But I want to concentrate on this trial, Trilateral Commission because this is pretty much what we're seeing here in this printing of money group. It is, And it's my contention that this this is actually the collapsing uh, world power right now. Uh, this this axis of the United States, Euro United States, Britain, Europe, and Japan, and some of the other Asian nations. Now, I've noticed that Jim Woolley is openly criticizing Jim Rickards, as I have done, and I want to look over here at this SDR basket. Now, the, Rickards has contended or is contending that the United States is going to move to a SDR type of currency. Uh, to me, that just seems asinine because the challenge, in my opinion, is coming from outside. Uh, it's coming from the BRICS. And, and it's my belief that they're intending to exit uh, the IMF the World Bank, um, all these organizations that they pretty much are fronts for the United States. So you can see here with this SDR that this is the same cast of characters here. Here, This is the International Monetary Fund site, SDR valuation. The currency value of the SDR is determined by summing the values in U.S. dollars. Okay, well, there, that tells you right there. <laughs> Why is it in U.S. dollars? Because it's a U.S. thing. All this stuff is, is U.S. Is this is just the U.S. pretending to be a member of some neutral world thing, just like the U.N. and all these other organizations. They're U.S.-controlled organizations. And the other powers in the world know that, and they play along with it, but they're rapidly pulling out. Uh, based on market exchange rates, a basket of major currencies, the U.S. dollar, the euro, the Japanese yen, and the pound sterling. There you go. There's your four. There's the members of the Trilateral Commission, and there's the economies that are all collapsing as we speak. Uh, America is hopelessly in debt. There's no way that's going to be resolved. Europe is an absolute basket case. Uh, the Japanese are committing harikari, and uh, the British, the only thing the British have at all is whatever they grift from the rest of the world through the various scams they set up in the city of London. So those are the basket cases that are collapsing right now. And to think that these bankrupt countries and regions are going to create some new currency that the rest of the world is going to want to use is absolute lunacy. It doesn't make any sense. Um, they'd probably be better off just sticking with these currencies than to go with that. Now you can see how the basket is made up. It's just euros, yen, pounds, sterling, and dollars. You can see the dollar equivalents there. So the vast bulk of it is going to be the US dollar and the euro, the Japanese yen and the pound just make very small parts of it. The, the US dollar and the euro put together make about 90% of the SDR. So in my opinion, just something that's nonsense that they're spouting records is parroting the trilateral commission they're they're going down and uh chinese uh power is going to rise that's just that's the writing on the wall in my opinion and they're fighting a losing battle and they seem to be getting more and more increasingly more desperate in the types of things that, that we do that they do um
Is there going to be another QE? There could be if the stock market starts to roll over really hard. But who knows with their shenanigans how they borrow and lend through these central banks. We don't even know the mechanisms. There's no audit. So we don't know how much money I covered before that at least $1.6 trillion has flowed over to the European Central Bank through the Fed. We don't know how much has gone over to Japan. The whole thing is all covered up. So we don't we can't really know. But we know that these are all foundering governments and these organizations, UN, World Bank, Trilateral Commission, all these they're also foundering as well. Uh, they're on their way out, in my opinion. So let's go and look at some of the coins here. Now, we're interested in stacking. Anytime we see a violent smackdown in silver, that's the time to step up and buy. Now, I've always followed the Perth uh, Lunar Series. That's my absolute top favorite. The ones that we had bought, we have a... Um, poll on the member site right now i think the members have bought four or five thousand ounces of horses those horses we were uh price on those was around 1250 for the half ounce 45 dollars for the two ounce for the most part those are gone you see them pop in every once in a while provident gets some two ounces but the ones on atmex for the half ounces are up to like 23 bucks now so i i think that that song is sung now, the other one that we were looking at before we go over to this this koala here, the other one that we were looking at was the 2013 half ounce koala, and a lot of you got that. I got mine at 11.08, and that was back when we were doing... It was that uh, up and down pattern right in here. So we'd just gone down below 15, and that's when I bought mine for 11.08. So say 22 bucks an ounce, and silver's about 16. So that's still a good um, $6 premium. But you can see that since then, Atmex has apparently thrown another almost another dollar on this because we're around at the same price. But I think maybe they had a mispricing or something. So congratulations to everybody who got those for around 11 bucks. I don't think you're ever going to see them again. And they're 2013, so they're they're not going to be minted again. Um, so if you like them at 11.94, that's still a pretty good deal. There's 629 of those left. Um, I don't I don't see how you can lose on that one. But that other one I was looking at, this is the best deal I could find today when I was looking. You can see 1104. They've got about 3,000 of these over at Gainesville Coins. And that's probably the original allotment. I have no idea. Maybe they can get more. I don't really know how the connection between the suppliers works going through Perth. There's probably a number of intermediaries, people who purchase from Perth and then they sell to these uh, bullion places. But 1104, that's a really good price. One of the reasons I'm not really tempted on this, and I'll probably look around for something else if we go lower, is because it's 2015. I don't like that. I like to buy preferably last year's and even earlier. Like I was delighted to get those 2013 half ounce for 1108 because once they're gone, then they get completely repriced. And so that's going to be a negative for me on this one. That's the only negative, but um, that is a negative because the coin is so new. Now, I wanted to show you how you search for these on Gainesville. The big ones that I look at, there's a lot of ones, you know, there's JM Bullion and someone mentioned Austin Precious Metals. And there's ones that I occasionally check, but the main ones that I check are always going to be Atmex. Gainesville and Provident Metals and the reason that that is is because first of all their prices move they're obviously hedged they're large enough that they're hedged and you have to be hedged if you're if you're selling silver because the price moves are so ridiculous basically by me picking up these 2013 uh, koalas I know that they're at a lower price than they were sold at because I know what the price of silver was back then. And so they're actually selling this coin to me at a loss. Now it's not a loss for them because they're hedged. 
So they made a tremendous paper gain on their shorts that they have on whether that's on the comics or puts that they buy, it doesn't matter, but they're basically have made money on their shorts to offset the loss that they've taken on these coins. Nevertheless, I'm getting the coins for a lower price than what they actually paid for it. So in a, in a sense, I'm kind of paper shorting silver if you want to look at it that way. So I want to show you here though with the lunar series, if let's take this check mark off here. Um, and I thought I had the the whole lunar series doesn't seem to be showing up the way it was before. Let me refresh the page. Okay, there it is. So you can see here, if we look at the results that we're showing one through 60 of 203 results of four pages. That's what they have in the past or what they have uh, either planned in the future, but they've actually had in stock at some point or plan to have in stock. But if we click this in stock button, you can see that goes from 203 results to 17 results. And you can see what those are. We've got the GOAT series, which is the current year, one, two and a half ounce. We, and then we immediately go to the 2010 Tiger series, right up there at $68. And that's it. You can see they're, they're by the lowest price. That's all they have. So one would ask why? Why is this stuff so hard to get? Well, I think it's because um, it's a fake price. And the people that are putting this out are pretty much doing so at a loss. They're the government of Western Australia, I believe, that owns it. But it's not in their interest to get rid of all their silver. But then again, they're in that business. So you just have these strange low quantities. And that's when you just want to fish around and pick up the best deal you can find. So let's get back to the price of silver. We seem to be bouncing here. We got to bounce off that 1577. Now these are all going to be new lows. So you're going to expect to see that type of activity going forward until we finally put in a bottom wherever that is. Because when you get a new low, there's going to be a lot of people stepping in and buying. Now, once again, it's only paper, but at some point, and others have pointed out that the open interest is still very, very high. So there's some people sitting on some pretty big paper losses who may be wanting to take delivery, maybe wanting to roll things over, maybe thinking that they picked a bottom. At some point, there's going to be a bottom, and there may be some people who make a tremendous amount of money on the long side in the paper market. Then again, they may just shut down, close up shop, and tell them, oh, well, we're settling in dollars. It's game over. So we're looking for that bottom. We're looking for new coins to stack. I'll keep you informed on the member site if I find anything new. And we'll talk to you next time.